Hello? Hi, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. Um, we're starting the broadcast. We're going to wait for everybody to catch up. And um, just type in, uh, if you can hear me, if you can hear me and see me uh, in, uh, just type it in the chat, please. So I know everything is OK. Done. All right, we have 24 people online right now. That's good. Let me set up some polls. Okay. Hey, Mulrak. I can see a message. Let's see if you guys can see me. Um, guys, can you hear me? Matt, can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Adam. All right. Getting getting a few people. Okay, there we go. Um, awesome. It's uh, finally morning in Brisbane. It was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a beard. Yeah, just. Um, so, yeah, if, if there's some problems with the sound or anything, just make sure your other devices are off and that your um, maybe other applications are off as well so that you all your instrument is dedicated to this. Um, yeah, we had a bit of a question about quality last time. Um, it really, because this is running through Google, um, what's it called? The Google Hangouts. Um, the quality is really dependent on internet connection. So some people might see brilliant quality, some people a bit worse. So try to switch everything off. Maybe switch off your phone from the Wi Fi. I'm going to really help. Um, yeah, all right. So it's good that we've got everyone here. I was just, it was funny because it's uh, in Australia, it's winter time and uh, we're in April. Uh, so we're moving into winter. And when I woke up today at 5 a.m., it was like pitch black, dark. And I thought, uh oh, so when the webinar starts, it's going to be dark. But finally, the sun is rising. So I'm just looking out the window here and um, we're going to have some lights. So I won't be this blue, hopefully. The whole session, this is just light from my screen. Um, all right, so we've got uh, 26 people online, and uh, we might start off by uh, asking the initial question. I'm always curious where you guys are from. So uh, please type in where you're watching this from, uh, what city in the world, and I'll read them out as they come in. All right, let's, let's go. First, I'm sitting here in uh, Brisbane in Australia. Um, usually we have people from all over the world and uh, even people from South Africa sometimes. Uh, Gig Harbor, USA. Brisbane, hey Walter. Br at Br okay, so it was a big time for Brisbane, 6 a.m. Belgium, Brussels, that's really cool. Boston, Belgium, Antwerp. Uh, I hope that I pronounced that right. Belfast, Ireland, Northern Ireland, uh, Canada, London, and Timmins, Ontario. Oh, I'm going to be in Canada soon. I can't wait. I'm going to be in Canada in, in July. First time ever. It's going to be fun. Uh, Netherlands, uh, CA, California. Oh, Mike, I'm going to be in California uh, next week, actually. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, Elmswell, Suffolk, uh, England. Awesome. Never been to England. Really want to go. Really want to go one day. Uh, Varma, Varna, Bulgaria. Cool. Remind me, uh, quick, quick. Uh, uh, interlude while we're waiting for maybe a few more people. We're playing this board game with my friends, um, Fury of Dracula. So cool. And it's got all the like the map of Europe, the old one, and it's got all the cities. And a lot of the cities you mentioned that just now are on that map, and it was really fun. Anyway, Newcastle. Hey, Jordan. I've been to Newcastle. Great city. Um, got a friend who lives there. All right, so let's kick this off. We're going to be talking about um, fundamental and today. So 
I'm going to share my screen. Let me remember how to do this. I'm getting better at this every time. Um, so screen two, please. Whoa, infinity. All right. So screen two, and what I need to show you today, so we won't have much of a presentation. And by the way, if, if the sound cuts out or anything, just type into the chat. I'm monitoring it on my other screen. So we won't have much of a presentation today. First thing I need to show you, as always, the disclaimer has to be displayed for at least five seconds legally. Uh, we're in Australia. Everything is pretty serious here. So just have a read through that. Um, you know, If you need to, then come back to the replay, have a read through that, just so you um, Make sure, yeah, Morak. I haven't changed my background. Yeah, I like I like that background. It inspires me to to achieve more. So I'll keep it for a while. Basically, a disclaimer is saying that uh, none of this is personal advice or investment advice. This is we're just learning. So I'm just providing you general advice for a foreign exchange market. If you uh, you should always take it for a grain of salt, and you should consider your personal financial situation. Um, how does your <laughs> financial situation uh, and needs? And basically, just read through the disclaimer, make sure you're comfortable with all of this. All right, so now moving on. Today, uh, this is a ForexBoat webinar, the ForexBoat Trading Academy. We're getting a new website design very, very soon. Can't wait for that to come out. And um, plan for today. So number one, it's going to be an easy webinar. It's a beginner level, uh, beginner level session. So. Uh, I wanted to set your expectations. I, I like to do th this at the start. Um, don't expect something um, over and above that we're going to. You're going to learn a lot of st new stuff. It's more of like if, if you're just starting into forex, you will learn quite a lot. If uh, if you've been in forex for a while, you might pick up a few tips and tricks. But it's mostly about um, covering off. Um, you know that you know how to read an economic calendar. You know how to like find events that are important, find events that are not important, and so on. So um, it's a very um, basic entry level uh, session today. Um, next, I'll show you some calendars that are out there. We'll just look at a couple because there's, there's like myriads of them. Um, then I'll show you how to read economic events on um, using that calendar that I really like. And we'll have a hands-on session. So we'll have a, a look at a couple of different economic events and we'll assess how they affected the market i've got a few prepared and we'll look at actually you know some random ones maybe you guys can call out some and uh, finally we'll have a q a as always so if you have any questions um uh, especially <laughs> relating to the webinar but not necessarily so just feel free to ask them during that q a session at then so all in all i expect this to be a bit shorter webinar than uh, usually. We usually go just over an hour, so this time maybe uh, we'll fit it into 45 minutes, but we'll see how we go. So um, as long as we learn something and we have some fun along the way, right? Okay, so that's us. And now let's move on to the first step, uh, step um, the calendars that are out there. So here I've got a page from Google. Let me maybe zoom in. You can see here that if you look for economic calendar, you get all of these economic calendars. And most of them are actually uh, relating to Forex. So pretty much all of them uh, can be used for Forex trading. Uh, and, and just goes on and on and on. So there's heaps of these calendars. So I, I'm just going to show you a couple of these. Uh, the FX Street economic calendar. FX Street is, is quite a, like, it's an OK website, personally, I think. Um, it's kind of like a social area for uh, traders. Um, I haven't dabbled in it too much, but there's a there's a calendar here. Um, as you can see, it's got like uh, the country, so the description. You can um, you can click on it, something opens up, and so on. So it's got the importance um, of the calendar. Now they all have this actual consensus and previous. We'll talk more about that. But basically, this is what it looks like right now. We're just talking about uh, comparing how they look. This is the FX Street one. Um, this is daily effects. Daily effects. They uh, they do pretty good um, news updates on uh, YouTube. So if you're interested in that, check out the YouTube channel. Uh, they have some interesting um, uh, updates there. And I, I know, like, not really personally, but I know a couple of people from there. A couple of their analysts. Um, Mike Botros is one of them, and he's pretty good. Um, all right, so that's their calendar. This is just just what it looks like. You you should get used to the feel. How do you feel about this calendar? So they all they all pretty much do the same thing, 
but um which which function which layout do you like the most that's what we're looking at right now here's another one here's the bloomberg one and as you, you can see this one is uh way less um evolved i guess so it doesn't look as pretty it's more to the point strict and to the point i don't really like how this one looks so there you go you've had a look at three different ones you can keep searching through them until you find something that you like personally i'm very used to the forex factory calendar and that's the one i stick to i really like this one so um we're going to that's the one we're going to be talking about and this is what it looks like um it's a bit darker so those were mostly on a white background uh, once again, it, it's a more of a personal preference. So let me maybe zoom in so we can see a bit better. It's more of a personal preference. What kind of background you like on your calendar? But personally, I kind of I kind of like uh, the layout on this one. And more importantly, uh, I know that this one has all the functionality that I need, rather than the other ones. I need to explore and find out if they have all the functionality I need or not. All right, so we're going to uh, go with the Forex Factory calendar. So what you need to do is go to forexfactory.com slash calendar, and it'll take you to the right week. So you can see up here, forexfactory.com slash calendar. Uh, or, or dot, dot, okay. So Forex Factory is like, it's like a website. Um, it's got, well, the calendar is, is a major part of Forex Factory. That's why a lot of people come here. But also they've got a forum where there's a lot of good discussions. So you can check that out as well. But if you just go to forexfactory.com and click on calendar at the top, you'll also go to the calendar page. Um, you can log in, but you don't have to. So I just view it without logging in. And what it basically does is on the left, you've got the weeks. Um, so you've got the month and then you've got the week. And here it's showing us a whole week. So from Sunday, April 24th, Monday, and so on, up to Friday, Saturday, right? We know nothing happens on Saturday, Sunday normally. so. That's why these days are empty. And the first thing that you should do, and I suggest if you're following this webinar on your own computer, because this is a hands-on session, so might as well. Um, if, if you have two screens, probably that's that's going to be a bit handy. Um, over here at the top, there's the time. And I really like Forex, the Forex Factory calendar. And actually, a lot of them have this functionality. But this one specifically, uh, because you can synchronize your time to your time zone. So my time zone would be um, this one, right? So if I go there, now you see it's a synchronized time is 6.13 a.m., correct? <laughs> my friends in Brisbane um, and Newcastle, Jordan, will confirm that it is 6.13 on the east coast of Australia. Um, but why wasn't my calendar synchronized to the correct time zone? So why was, as you saw, it wasn't that time zone? Well, because now I can see the time the event is going to occur according to Brisbane, right? So I know that, for instance, let's go down, let's go find today, Friday, 8.45 a.m. I can expect uh, New Zealand building consents uh, to come out. So we'll talk about how to read this news in a bit. But like, why do I really, I don't really need to know when it's going to come out on Brisbane time. Like sometimes you do. Okay, fair enough. Sometimes you do. So you can plan on uh, you know you your day and you know you're at work and maybe at 8 45 you go and check this out if this is important to you but what you really need to know is when the news will come out according to your server so i'm using axie trader as you guys know and um here what you'll find is the time on the server is very different so it's right now it's still thursday it's 11 15 uh, p.m so their servers are located somewhere in the other side of the world so I want to synchronize my time to the time of the trading server. Why? Well, then, because then I can just look at the chart, look at the time on the chart, and compare it to the time on the actual calendar. And that makes sense, right? Instead of converting it from my local time to the uh, time of the server, I would uh, do just that. So that's why I go here and I change this to, uh, what was it? I think it was this one. So let's try that one. So as you can see, it's now 11.15 p.m., just as it is in my uh, market watch. So here, I don't know if you can see, it's pretty small, but it's uh, 11.15 here. So it's uh, it's not hard to do. You just figure out what time zone your server is in, and there are tools online that can help you figure that out, or just you, you compare it to the GMT time, and then you figure it out here, and you just uh, set the right time. And now you can see, so if we go back 
you can see that if I scroll down, um, where are we? Here we are. You can see that the New Zealand news is no longer 8.45, it's at 1.45 a.m., right? So meaning that it's moved seven hours. And just, just as we change the time zone by seven hours, it's moved seven hours. So now I know that this is no longer my local time because I, here in Brisbane, sorry, it's 6, 6 a.m., so it's, it's definitely not the local time. This is the time on the server. And now I know that at 1.45, according to server time, this news will come out. So once again, I think that... Uh, this approach is better and this is you know reverting to the tips that I was going to give you to set up your calendar in the best way I think this approach is better sometimes you might need uh, to set your local time but most of the time I think it's better to set your server time because that way you're like working with the chart directly and with your calendar all right so we are, once we've done that now we can proceed uh, to learning a bit more about how to read this calendar and what it's telling us here okay so Obviously, you've got the date, then you've got the time, then you've got the currency that's affected. So, uh, obviously, the currencies will be affected, pairs, currency pairs will be affected. So, anything with New Zealand dollar will be affected by this news. Anything with US dollar, Euro dollar, US dollar Canadian, uh, Australian dollar, US dollar, all of that will be affected by this news. And maybe even other currencies, some currencies correlate with these or you know are also dependent on news of other currencies. Uh, but basically, what they're saying here is what country is, is releasing this news, which uh, government is uh, making this statement or releasing this these statistics. Then in this next column, which is called impact, you have a color. And the color basically, well, the symbol is a symbol of Forex Factory, right, like there. But the color represents how important the news is for the currency. So for instance, gray is not important, meaning it's a bank holiday. Well, and that's a bit deceiving because a bank holiday is very important, meaning that there's no movement in that currency. So we'll actually have a look at what happened here um, when we're doing the practical side of things. Uh, but just gray means like, you know, no predicted impact. And then you've got yellow, orange, and red. Obviously, yellow is like, uh, you know, not that important. It's just news. Maybe somebody who's interested in mortgage approvals might look into that or uh, somebody who's um, interested in, I don't know, UBS consumption indicators uh, or German import prices. Like, then you might be uh, cautious of those. So that's not just more the yellow stuff. I wouldn't say it's always for retail forex traders. It's more for specialized industries or uh, people in a specialized um, jobs because they they might be interested in that specific thing orange is a bit more important so trade balance for new zealand so new zealand isn't that <laughs> with no offense to people from uh, new zealand if anybody's on the webinar uh, but new zealand isn't such a major currency in uh, well it isn't a major currency in uh, the forex market so uh, the trade balance for new zealand doesn't have you know it's not as important uh, in the scheme of things, but and generally, just the trade balance isn't as impactful on a um, currency as, for instance, other statistics. But at the same time, they give it an orange because it is a more important that, um, uh, for instance, that German import prices uh, news release that happened in on Wednesday. So, and then you've got the red, and the red's the most important one. So, I personally don't really. Uh, bother about the orange and yellow because there's way too many of them as you can see the red ones are the ones you should look out for the red ones are the ones that can um, significantly impact your that specific currency so let's have a look through them what we had this is all this is just past week or this current week so you had German IFO business climate um, then you had core durable goods orders you had BOC uh, I think that's Bank of Canada government Polos, uh, Gov Polos speaks, so governor, I guess. <laughs> uh, CB consumer confidence, CPI, consumer price index, uh, pre preliminary GDP for the British pound. British pound. Um, you got crude oil, crude oil, FOM FOMCAS, FOMC statement, federal funds rate. So that's all U.S. dollar. That's especially the U.S. dollar ones. That's that's the important one because, as you know, US dollar um, is a global currency and it's traded. It's used in many, many countries. So sometimes you should really look out for news that comes out for the US dollar. That's probably the most important one. So if it's red and it's US dollar, 
then you should really uh, consider um, that this might have an impact. And then you've got New, Z New Zealand dollar, official cash rate, uh, Reserve Bank of New Zealand state rate statement, um, Japanese yen monetary policy statement, uh, Bank of Japan outlook report, and so on. So as you can see, that's that's the news that we have. And then also we've got some more information here. We're going to go through this now. But before we do, you can see that where we are up to this arrow, everything above has got this information is filled. Below, it's not. So well, the, this, these columns are filled, but this column is not. And that is because this is the actual column. So you've got actual forecast and previous. And what that means is what is uh, the forecast? What is the forecast for this specific statistic? So if it's just somebody talking, um, uh, if it's just somebody talking, then that um, you know doesn't uh, sometimes doesn't have a forecast. Or in this case, it's, it should probably because there was a forecast previously, or there was a value previously. Maybe they just didn't come up with forecast. Uh, bank holiday, obviously, there's no forecast. Or here, for instance, Reserve Bank of Australia assistant. Um, I really should find out what GOV stands for. Uh, Debel speaks, and um, so in this case. Um, there is no forecast because it's just a speech and you can't predict she's not she's not or that um, event is not releasing any specific uh, statistics per se um, all right so let's look at these values and this is the important stuff so if you have a let's look at one of them for instance um, which one do we want to look at uh, here's a good one a New Zealand dollar official cash rate so their previous value was 2.25. Their forecast was 2.25. So they're predicting, they were predicting that there was going to be no change in the official cash rate. And that's exactly what happened. So there was no change in the official cash rate. And so basically meaning that uh, the Bank of New Zealand didn't want to put it up, didn't want to put it down, they just left it as it is. Um, so the important thing here is not comparing this to this. So it doesn't really matter um, how, how it changed. Did it go up or did it go down? What we are interested in is how did it compare to the forecast, right? So as soon as the forecast is released, let's go down. So here you can see, for instance, the forecast is 0 0.44. Okay, that's not that's not really important news. Um, let's have a look at something more important. So Canada GDP, right? So 0.6%, the forecast is minus 0.1%. So what we want to see is what will the actual be compared to the forecast? Because once the forecast is released, the market is expecting this, right? So we the market has expectations that this is what's going to happen to the GDP. Now, if that's exactly what happens, regardless of what it was previously, if the, uh, the reality aligns with the market expectations, then the market will just keep moving in the way it was moving and there won't be a significant impact most likely. But if the actual is more than the forecast or less than the forecast, that's when the uh, things start happening because market was expecting one thing, but in reality a different thing happened. And what can help you out to resolve these things is um, this notepad, note here. So once you click the note, then you've got this window that pops up and it tells you more about this currency. And that's why I really like Forex Factory because even if you don't know uh, a lot about the news, so advanced GDP for the US dollar, right? So it kind of makes sense what that is, but um, you still might need some additional information. So for instance, here, it actually tells you the usual effect. So if actual is greater than forecast, that's good for currency. That, like they've broken it down into very simple, into a very simple formula. No, no, not many words, just actual greater forecast, good for currency. So in this case, you can see that the forecast was 0 0.7 um, and the actual was 0 0.5. So what does that mean? That means that the actual was less than the forecast. So people are expecting 0 0.7 it actually dropped or was less than that. So that's bad for the currency. And most likely at that point in time, you would see the US dollar um, drop or currencies with the US dollar, the US do if um, the US dollar uh, um, is um, you know having this event that's not good for it, then like for instance, your dollar would go up or US dollar, Can Canadian dollar should go down. And then you've got some additional information about this uh, uh, news element. So released quarterly about 30 days after the quarter ends. Uh, so they're telling us what the GDP for that um, quarter was or what the change was. While it's QQ data, it's reported in annualized format. So quarterly quarterly change times four. That's good to know. 
there are three versions of GDP released a month apart, advanced, preliminary, and final. So this is the advance. The advanced release is the earliest and thus trends tends to have the most impact. So once they release the uh, GDP for that quarter, uh, or the change in GDP for that quarter, then the next quarter they will, uh, re or not the next quarter, uh, next month they will revise that and they'll say, oh, actually, you know, uh, we we said we recalculated everything and it's not 0 0.5, it's 0 0.6. Then final might be, oh, actually, it's not 0 0.6, it's actually 0 0.5 or 0 0.7 and stuff like that. But the thing is, as you can see, if there was a quarter, there's three months, then a month after the quarter they released the advance. Then another month later, they released the preliminary, and then another month later, they released the final. But what is going to happen when they release the preliminary? Well, in that same month, they're going to be releasing the advance for the next uh, quarter, right? Um, no, actually, no, that's not true. They're not going to be releasing the next quarter. That's um, they're going to be they're going to have to wait for that obviously for that quarter to end. But what's going to happen is that because the advance is already out, and people, you know, like people have. Uh, they had their expectations and um, they were, you know, expecting one thing and then something else happened. Um, that's that's what they're saying here, that it's uh, the most, uh, it has the most impact, the first one. And the second and third one, they're kind of like, they trail behind. So even if they change it quite a bit, people are already focused on other things. So uh, be careful of that. The advanced GDP is uh, perhaps the most uh, important out of the three, as they say here. And what you can see here is um, also you can see the history, actual forecast, and so on. Um, that means what it was for the previous quarter. So Jan, October, July, and so on. So um, you've got, uh, was it greater? So in this case, forecast was 0 0.8, it was actual 0 0.7. So every time it's a bit less than uh, the forecast, which is interesting to observe. Okay, so that's how you read a specific element of news that's interesting to you. So you can actually read some stories here. You can, you know, open these up and read about them. I personally don't delve into that. Um, let's check out the graph. So you've got you've got a chart here if you like, and um, like blue is actual, orange is forecast. Then you can even look at the revisions. So you can see that's that's revision. So uh, let's get rid of the forecast. You can see that's their revised value, which we were talking about just now. Um, interesting how sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, for instance, uh, let's have a look here. So sometimes you've got, uh, I'm, I'm just looking for a point where you've got the forecast in between uh, the actual and the uh, revision. So here, for instance, you've got the actual, the forecast, and the revision. So the revision was, became, went on the other side of the forecast so that can happen as well all right so that's how you read a specific element of news and now we're going to move on to the practical side of things right so okay um where is my meta track for <laughs> there it is and what i wanted to show you is i wanted just to show you a couple of um uh, elements of news that I pointed out. So we're going to start with at the start of the week, right? So what did we have here at the start of the week? We had um, all day, because I'm in Australia, let's do this one, uh, bank holiday in Australia, right? It was Anzac Day, Australian and uh, New Zealand Army Corps Day. And it was a bank holiday because it was a public holiday here. Nothing happened. Um, what does that mean for the Australian dollar? So I've highlighted this part. As you can see, during a bank holiday, something to look out for, currencies don't move a lot. So obviously there was some movement because other countries were trading the Australian and uh, Australian dollar. Actually, Australian and New Zealand uh, both uh, had uh, the public holiday. So here you can see that there's a bit of consolidation. So the volatility here is quite high, right? So there's a change in price, it's like the market's moving around. Afterwards, the market's moving around as well. Here, it was a bit consolidated. So uh, be careful about that. If you've got, um, if you're trading a currency and it's a public holiday, expect that the market movements will be different because a large proportion of banks that operate in that specific currency are not on the market. Another thing you'll notice is that there's this boom uh, drop off. And uh, you know that can be caused by certain news elements. Uh, but even, for instance, this uh, spike over here, uh, which happened at around 10 a.m., or started this whole 
this whole thing started at the like 9 a.m right so what what is that well because there's so much consolidation and while these banks were resting while these banks in australia uh, were um, you know not not operating banks in other parts of the world were operating and they were trading the currency and so on and um, you know things were happening and so then they come back to work and it's you know morning 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 3 a.m 5 a.m 6 a.m uh, and then it hits like 8 a.m 9 a.m stuff starts getting real they start going through their paperwork going through their emails going through, like executing transactions uh, doing things that they normally do on a Monday this was a Monday and so basically the uh, after a public holiday it is okay or is normal for volatility to be higher so that's why you have this spike here because you know a lot of a big backlog of orders a big lag backlog of um, unresolved transactions that were supposed to resolve on Monday exist and that's when they actually hit the market and that's why you have things like that and in this case uh, it might have been news um, might be some might have been something else uh, but you know like I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this was also um, attributed or partially attributed to uh, the fact that there was a public holiday before so we'll look out for public holidays it can be a bit deceiving that they put a gray mark over here but um, that's you know like the effect comes in later afterwards so here you've got a flat and then uh, increased volatility on the next day is is normal all right, so let's go to our favorite currency, Euro dollar. Um, what do we have here? So what have I highlighted? I'm just gonna move this to the side. I, you can see this spike here, right? What is this? Where did this spike come from? Why is it like just mark, mark, mark movement, and then bam, the volatility? Or during this, what is this? This is the um 15 minute uh, time frame. So you've got a spike here of. By the way, to do that, just middle click the mouse button. 90 uh, pips, right? So 90 pips spike. Where does that come from on the 15 minute time frame? We just look at the time. Time, I don't know if you can see, but at the bottom, the time is 27th April 2100, so 9 p.m. We go back here, we go 27th April, do, 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 9 p.m. What happened? The FOMC statement and the federal funds are rate. All right, so these two elements of news were released you can read about them and once again so um you can um assess what the statement was so they they tell you a bit more about the fomc usually changes the statement slightly at each release it's a primary tool the fomc uses to communicate with investors about monetary policy so basically this is um oh, there it's got other names as well interest rate statement fed statement monetary policy statement so um uh, you can look at the statement and try to understand um what impact it had i usually don't do these kinds of things uh, but you know sometimes it inter it's interesting especially if you're trading fundamental analysis if you're uh, really into this kind of stuff and then you've got the federal funds rate so basically two important pieces of uh us news this one as you can see it was expected zero, less than 0 0.5 it was 0 0.5 and you have a star here so usually they explain this star um Okay, source maintained a target range of 0 0.25 to 0 0.50. Um, honestly, like usually the star means that the news was released early or something like that. So basically, either both of them or either one of them had some impact, and that's why this happened. And as you can imagine, like what what happened in the end? Like the marker was moving here, and then just kept moving, right? So this is just this like random movement in the middle, and this brings us to the main concept that. I have four economic calendars and what I do about them is I just use economic calendars to stay away from trading when there is news in the market I mean, some people trade fundamental analysis um, and I have a lot of respect for these people but at the same time I prefer technical analysis I prefer robots and why would I get into the market when I know that something like this is about to happen, right? Especially when it's a statement, when I have no clue whatsoever what's going to happen. I don't, I don't have any numbers. I don't have any forecasts. I can't do any analysis. Yes, I can maybe hypothesize and try to investigate and understand what they're going to say about this um, uh, monetary policy. But at the same time, if I get it wrong, I get into something like this. Or even if I get it right, like this movement happened it's a 90 pip movement in 15 minutes 
So if, if we, let's just put this back here, and we go to the M1 time frame. Let's have a look at that. Let's see what we see here. Boop, boop, boom, boop, boom. We'll probably zoom out a bit. bit, bit. Oh, wrong way. There we are. Oh, where's that thingy? There. So if I zoom in here, you can see that it's like a total, total destruction. So it went down. Let's move that to the side. It went down like crazy in one minute. This is happening in one minute. In one minute, it went down 60 pips in one minute. So that's 10 pips per second. Then climb back up, right? And that's uh, the other thing that often happens with news. Like the people, the market overreacts. The market's like, oh, something went wrong. Or in this case, euro, dollar. So the news was released for the dollar and the euro is going down. So meaning something went right for the dollar. And they're like, oh, so cool, so cool, so cool for the dollar. And then they're like, oh, actually, uh, it's not that cool. And then it's, they start going back up. And so what's this all about? And what, what's the point of all of this? You can try to make money off of this. But personally, I try to stay out of the market when these things happen. And the good thing is, I don't know which way it'll happen, but I know when it'll happen. I just look here. I know this is synchronized. Oh, whoops. Where is that? Where is that um, news? Here it is. Is that it? That's it. No, it's not it. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting lost. I'm getting a loss. There it is. So I know when it'll happen because this calendar is synchronized to my um, uh, terminal. And I'm like, OK, at 9 PM, this is going to happen. Red, red, US dollar, US dollar, switch my robots off, or uh, tell them not to trade at that time. Or just if I'm trading manually, just stay out of the market and see see how it plays out. All right. So that's, that's um, my philosophy about uh, fundamental analysis. Just um, use it, but use it to stay out. OK, let's have a look. What else do we have? What else have I prepared for us here? All right, there's a good one. So this blue one, and there'll be another blue one, um, is an important. So this is one of my tips, again, for you um, on how to think about uh, fundamental analysis. Um, on the first Friday of every month, since the beginning of time, since the dawn of time, on the first Friday of every month, the U.S. government releases two important elements of news, which are the non-farm and non-farm payroll and unemployment rate. And I'm going to show you those right now. So if we go scroll up, we go to the very first Friday of April, which was 1st of April, April Fool's Day. Um, and by the way, if you click on just one day, you get one day instead of the whole week. So here you can see that at 3:30 p.m. the U.S. released. Um, you know that that sometimes happens, but these always come out on the first Friday of every month. Sometimes there are exceptions if there's a holiday or if, uh, if there's some delays or something. Sometimes they might be on the second Friday, the move to the second Friday. But most of the time they're on the very first Friday of every month, and you can even synchronize that time or like understand what time it is in your time zone, so you're expecting it. They release these two important elements of news. So non-farm and employment uh, employment change is change in the number of employed people during the previous month, excluding the farming industry. So basically, like in cities and manufacturing and stuff like that. Actual is for great forecast, good for currency. It's obvious, right? So um, that's um, that's how many people they were expecting, how many extra jobs they were expecting to see, uh, and that's uh, how many extra jobs were actually created in. Um, the previous month. So that's good, right? So extra 9,000 jobs. Unemployment rate uh, is a percentage of a total workforce that is unemployed and actively seeking employment during the previous month. So 4.9% people were unemployed in March, January, February, March, in March in the US. Um, that, no, so that's what the forecast was. But actually, there was 5% of uh, people that were unemployed. Um, so that's bad for the currency. That means there were more unemployed people than expected. So, but then out of these two, you know, one of them is bad, one of them is good. So they kind of like mitigate each other. They come at the same time, but at the same time, maybe one of them has a stronger effect. And that's what we're kind of seeing here. You can see that uh, euro dollar is going down, which means the dollar, American dollar is going up, which means that all, all in all, it was good for the currency. And another thing, what do we see after this? What do we see after this movement? Guys, you, you should see this already now. We see a downward movement, right? So that's that's the news. That's that's the rapid movement down. And 
look at my beautiful arrow. What happens after that, right after that movement? Boom, right? It goes back up. It doesn't go back up all the way, but went down, went back up. Why? Why is this happening? So you should know this, and I've already told you this on, on the previous one. Sometimes uh, investors and the market overreact. So it went like down, try to go up here, and then down, pushing, 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 push. Pe people get people get greedy. People get like, oh, I got to get on this movement. I got to jump on, jump on, jump on. And too many, like, it's supposed to go up to here. But people see that this is going down. They know that news is in the market, and they, they start getting trying to jump on this trend. And then it starts moving up from there because it's auto, it corrects itself, right? It's the fair price is here. People pushed it over, pushed it the way down because of greed, because of anxiety because of you know the rush and then it starts going back up so this is normal when there's a news event usually and like not not usually but a lot of the time from my observations a lot of the time it goes back uh, a bit retraces a little bit after the news so it corrects itself because uh, because people overbuy or oversell so that's another thing to expect so that's tip number three and um so we're getting close to our 45 minute mark. Whoa, whoa, and we still have QA. So let me show you another one here quickly. All right, here. Um, here we have, let me just quickly write something down. So three is, that's down up. That was three. Okay. All right, so this is what we see. Um, uh, this is the first Friday of March. Oh, is it the first Friday of March? It doesn't look like the first Friday of March. Um, no, definitely not the first Friday of March. There's some other news here, but basically what you can see is uh, this is the 16th of March. You can see what I wanted to show you here is that often, we haven't seen this yet, but often there's consolidation before the news. So if you look at the market, so quite, quite drastic movements, boom, 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 boom. And then when... Um, the market is expecting some news to release there's a bit of a consolidation usually it looks like a triangle so maybe you can see it here a bit so that triangle right and then there, there's a bit of a drift so there's a triangle and then there's a bit of a drift but basically the market volatility goes down because people are expecting something to happen there's this anticipation in the market anticipation causes a um consolidation so look out for those things before a news occurs and also there are and on the uh, contrary as well, if you see that occurring, then probably something's about to happen, consolidation, uh, after consolidation. And what did I have here? This purple one, um, but, um, just, you, you can see like, you can see, this is just an example of where uh, you can see a, a jump in the market. So even if you didn't check the calendar and you don't know if there's news or not, you can check, you can go and check if there was news. So this was 29th of, um march at 7 15 right so let's have a look at what happened there 29th of march do 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 7 20 7 20 see so usually the 15 minute time frame um by the way tip number four right uh four no four was consolidation five was a uh, 15 minute time frame um so uh, 15 minute time frame is usually okay because news comes out in 15 minute increments usually or even hourly increments but 15 minute time frame is okay in this case it wasn't the 15 minute time frame it was on the 20 minute time frame so you can see here that at the actual news came out at 7:20, like right on the dot the federal uh fed chair yellen speaks so that's um the chair of the federal reserve in the us and she was speaking then at 7.20, and as you can see, exactly then, Euro dollar jumped up because apparently she delivered some bad news for the US dollar. Um, so there you go, you can always use the, the calendar um, chart combination backwards as well. You can check if something on your chart means that something was on the calendar if you forgot to check your calendar uh, at the start of the week or in the morning or whenever. Okay, so, that's quite a lot of tips. We're just going to go through them now as well. Uh, calendar chart backwards. Um, start a week. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me let me go back here. We're at our forty-five minute time frame uh, time mark, and so I'm going to go back into 
um, <laughs> I'm gonna go back into my visual mode, which means uh, you can see my face. Oh, there, oh, I'm getting lazy. All right, there we go. All right, so what we're gonna do now is type in your questions into the questions box. So I can, I can answer them in the next 15 minutes or so uh, while you're typing your questions. Don't be afraid to be the first. Don't be afraid to be the first to, to ask a question. It's always the first question that's the hardest. And plus, you don't have to say anything. Just type in. And while you're typing them in, I'm just going to go over those um, tips that I gave you because I gave you seven tips. Wow, seven tips in this uh, presentation. I just want you to jot them down for yourself so that you can always um, refer to them and when you're doing your uh, fundamental analysis. All right. Actually, seven, no, eight tips. Eight tips. Okay, tip number one, uh, use the Forex Factory calendar or whichever other calendar you use, uh, but size uh, it not to your time zone, to your server's time zone. That way you can use the uh, chart and calendar combination most effectively. Uh, number two, non-farm and unemployment come out on the every first of Friday on the first Friday of the month. So sometimes that can be different, but look out for those. So if you don't even have to look at the calendar, if it's the first Friday of the month, be careful. Stay, maybe stay away from trading. Maybe look at the time when they're going to come out. Stay away from trading that time and before and just after. So many people have gotten burned. It moves so fast. The most volatile news that comes out regularly on the market and the market just moves insanely fast. Stop losses don't work. Take profits don't work. Not like often. I'm not guaranteeing, but it can happen that you have a stop loss. Market goes through it, and um, you can lose more than your original investment than your balance. Be careful of that. Um, very very dangerous news. Um, tip number three: After the market moves up or down during uh, a news event, very common for to correct. Because of the investors and traders overbuying or overselling because of that um, because of that greed, because of that quick rapid movement, everybody tries to get in. It just like it's like a spring, it goes too far and then comes back. So or the other way around, down and up. It's not always, but very often. So also be aware of that. Be careful of that. Um, that might impact your trading or um, however you might. Uh, use it or not use it. Tip number four, often before news you have consolidation. And this is a normal effect, normal, um, um, yeah, effect which uh, shows that there is uncertainty in the market, that uh, people expect something to happen but they don't know what it's going to be. So they're trying to stay away from the market. They're trying to, some people trying to stay away so they don't lose money, some people are trying to stay away so they can jump in right at the moment when uh, when they have more certainty. They think that they'll get the news earlier and then they'll put their trades. Usually it doesn't happen like that unless you're doing some insider trading, which is illegal. So consolidation, um, if you know there's news, that might, there is a good chance there will be consolidation. If there is consolidation, maybe have a second thought, look at the calendar, there might be news coming up. Works both ways. Number five, 15 minute time frame is usually sufficient. Uh, because as humans operate in you know, 15 minute intro intervals, except for that one time we just saw when Yellen released her um, news at um, 20 past something. Um, usually, is, uh, is a good time frame to look at uh, news events and study them. Um, all right, so calendar. So, we talked about this a bit. Um, this is tip number six. Uh, you can use the calendar to look at the chart, but also if you see something on the chart, you can check it with the calendar. Work ways. Tip number seven, start of week. Um, look, like you, you can check your calendar anytime, but maybe get into a habit of checking it at the start of the week. And depending on what you want to do, do you want to trade fundamental analysis? Do you want to stay away from the market like I do? You know, it's good to check the calendar at the start of the week and then just go up on these dates, uh, on these days, I should expect news at this time, and maybe even like set those things in your chart, like just set vertical lines for yourself, so you know, all right, news is coming up, news is coming up, news is coming up. And tip number eight, uh, probably more of a guideline, <laughs> or more of a what I do, uh, stay out of the market if there's news. Right? 
If you don't trade news, don't trade news. If you trade news, yeah, that's your bread and butter. But if you don't trade news, why why risk it? Stay out of the market. There we go. Hope you enjoyed them and hope you got to write them down. And now we've got some questions. Charles asks, do you think it's viable to build a robot that straddles news? I think not. I honestly think not. I've tried that, been there, done that. Uh, no. <laughs> really, really no. Um, you need very fast execution. You need a very uh, liquid broker. You need reliable execution. Um, with with it, it's not feasible. It, I'm not saying that you know Axie Trader is not reliable or fast. It's just not fast enough. It's like you need you literally need to be in the exchange to be the first one there. You need to be at the bank. You need to be so you need to physically be close to to get there in on time because as soon as that kicked off and as soon as the bro starts setting things there's already like a hundred thousand orders in there and um, before you get or by the time your order gets executed the market's already gone way past and uh, your order will you set it here market goes through your order will be executed here and your take profit was here so you're actually going to lose money when your take profit hits so I would not recommend that. Jack you check the news regularly just a daily just on daily basis is this 100% enough to expect these jumps in the market shortly said are you protected and prepared enough just by checking news or is it sometimes the market jumps even when there is no news um, yeah no it's not it's not enough it's it's um, like you will never be 100% protected they can always be like um, a tsunami in Japan, knock on wood, uh, there can be a you know some some other event that's a solar flare that has affected all solar batteries and somehow power cut in the U.S. or something. Um, they they can be news that hasn't been put into the calendar, so uh, somebody might go out and just say something. You definitely you're yourself more. You're increasing your protection by uh, checking the calendar. And you do it on a daily basis even better because maybe some new news was uh, created. But I, I find weekly basis should be enough. But no, I don't think um, there's a way to 100% protect yourself. Never. Forex it has an inherent risk. You're never going to cut them out, even risks like this. So yeah, um, do, do as much as you can. That's my advice. Can some, uh, Charles asks another question. Can some news about US dollar impact currencies that aren't cross with it? Um, you mean? Like currency pairs that don't have the U.S. dollar and the U.S. dollar impacting them, like say Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, or Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, or I don't know um, some other currency that doesn't have a U.S. dollar. I think so. Yeah, definitely. Because, uh, like we said, U.S. dollar is the global currency, and a lot of exchanges happen through the U.S. dollar, and uh, oil is traded through the U.S. dollar, and um, a lot of these currencies, especially Australian, Canadian, New Zealand dollar, they are um, commodity currencies so uh, the, the oil might affect the commodities or transportation of the commodities and there's all this chain of events and so the longer the chain the lower the effect but yeah it can happen um, okay so before you guys go polls let's do a poll let's do a quick poll um, all right all right all right, all right. Um, oh, I should have done this one at the start all right let's do this one anyway so tell me please uh, do you use fundamental analysis in your trading? Yes, I use fundamental analysis to make decisions. Yes, but I use fundamental analysis only to know when to stay out of the market. And no, I don't use fundamental analysis. So go ahead and submit your votes for that so that we know um, how everybody feels around about fundamental analysis on uh, this webinar. Okay, so we've got some. Oh, it's 33%. Okay, no, it's changing. All right, we'll give it um, another five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, so what do we have? Let's end this poll. We have 40% yes, I use fundamental analysis to make decisions. 20% yes, but I only use it to stay out of the market. That's me. And 40% uh, no, I don't use fundamental analysis. Interesting split. Okay, all right. Interesting how your means will change. And um, let's do one more. Oh, actually, actually two more. One important one. Um, 
please uh, tell me how was the quality of uh, this video of the webinar because I'm just making sure that you could see me well. So very good, good, not good, but acceptable. Or I could not see you here. They had problems throughout the webinar. You had um, issues. Okay. All right. So we've got a couple of people not good, but acceptable. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Let's give that another five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so we've got 54% good, uh, 38, 36, not good, but except, okay, 33. All right, good, that, that'll help me understand if I can tweak something, maybe maybe move to a different country where the internet is better. You guys from Australia will know, internet is better, not good. All right, thank you. And one last poll, just for me, just, just for the love of trading. <laughs> How would you rate this webinar on a scale from one to five? Five being the highest and one being the lowest. Let me know what you think. Uh, and you're not rating my beard. You're rating the webinar and the stuff you learned on the webinar. Um, all right. So that's good. That's good. Let's give it another five seconds. Five, um, oh, three, two, one. Wow, okay, some interesting votes came in at the end. Thank you very much. 58% said five stars, 25% uh, said four stars, and 17% said three stars. Thank you very much for attending. I really enjoyed seeing you again. The recording will be uh, created and sent out to you automatically. Uh, also, you'll be able to access the previous recordings. If you have any problems, email support at forexboat.com. I look forward to seeing you next time. I look forward to seeing you on the courses. I look forward to seeing you on websites. Thanks a lot for coming. And uh, until next time, happy trading. See you guys. Thanks, Jack. That's cool. <laughs>